I mostly just wanted to come out here to tell all of you that I'm so proud of the work that you've been doing. But here's the thing, you should want more. I've had past awkward encounters socially here in Southern Oregon. So I feel that the best way to avoid that next time is to just have a conversation with white-bodied individuals about how to avoid situations like that. Like one time I was at Fred Meyer and this lady walks up to me and goes, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Do you know my neighbor? I'm like, no. <laughs> so just awkward stuff like that, you know? This state itself is quite literally a giant bubble of isolationism where you're living in a predominantly white neighborhood, the neighborhood next to you is predominantly white, and it's because of that isolating environment that you're not gonna know how to interact with people different from you. You're not gonna know. A couple of years ago, we passed a bill that makes Juneteenth a uh, state holiday. Of course, there was federal legislation for that. And it's really taken off in Medford, obviously. And I think it's just exciting because, you know, Medford traditionally has not been that diverse a place. In this way, I feel like we're more recognized as an African community, as a dark native community. Reparations is important for both. Um, representation is important for both. So for us to show out here, you know, melanated community showing up, and taking good care of each other is important. That's like what really like makes a community. And what brings you guys down here to the Juneteenth celebration? You know, we just want to connect with the community, um, celebrate cultural diversity, and um, just answer any questions and hang out with the kiddos, which have been super fun today. My only issue that I that I took up with Emily Simon and a couple people who are involved with organizing is that the police don't ever show up with guns ever again, because. Our tribes are having warfare right now, and we're the ones that are getting attacked. So they need to not be uh, showing any kind of violent kind of um, embodiments. They need to be playing close. I mean, there's not really a situation where we're going to not be armed. We have to be prepared for something that might happen, whether it's here or somewhere else in the community. I hope that people don't think that uh, it's a negative thing. It's just part of what we wear every day. Tell me about like the work that BASE does. What is BASE and uh, what does it do? Yeah, so BASE is all about building an inclusive community. Uh, we're a platform for connection, support, resources, and overall the advancement of those that have been excluded. And our work primarily focuses on the equity for black residents here and trying to help build them up. So we do anything from youth programs to opportunities and jobs, scholarships. We try to do networking events. We try to get people to come together and see each other and know each other. And ultimately, cultural celebrations, right? So we know that we're represented in the community because that's one of the fundamental ways of knowing that you matter. Justice delayed is justice denied and that we are still in justice denied category in this country. And it's never been more important to remember who we are and that we are all one people together to fight for each other. I learned the lesson from Dr. King about love and taking that anger, turn it away because it eats away at you. Give love, show love. And even when they beat us on Bloody Sunday, when they would torture us when we were in the jail cells, and I went there many times, I'm speaking the truth. I often would sing the song, I love everybody. We are not afraid. Help me with it. We are not afraid. We are not afraid. One day, Everyone will be like this all the time, and the world will be just a big sandbox for all the children to play in and get dressed up. But we got a lot of work to do before that. <laughs>